Alright, this is Momodora, Reverie Under the Moonlight. Uh, I am going to do the playing and most of the commentary, and uh, JGG is going to help me with some of the commentary. Uh, it was supposed to be played on uh, Insane, but I forgot that you have to beat hard first to, in, uh, to unlock it, so it's going to be on hard instead, which will mean that we ha will have slightly more health, but other than that, nothing will change. So I guess we'll start. If you count me down. So, three, two, one, go. So this game is a 2D Metroidvania platformer. It's a short, li neat little game. And uh, yeah, playing on hard, as you'll see in the top left corner after this cutscene ends, I'll have a small health bar. If we played on Insane, I would only have one health to start out with, so anything would have killed me. But I'll still play as if I only had one health, so hopefully nothing will change. And I will try to avoid dying as much as possible. At the start of the game, you have a jump and a double jump. You also have a roll, a melee attack and a ranged attack. The roll is one of the most important tools in this game, because it allows you to move faster than just, well, just walking or running. And it also allows you to pass through enemies and avoid attacks without taking damage. Which, well, if I was playing on Insane, it would have uh, been invaluable. Now it's just a very useful tool for going fast and avoiding enemies. Something you might see me do as well is what is called a roll jump, which is done by inputting a roll and a jump on the same frame, like this. Which gives you the m mobility and invincibility of the roll while getting the height from a jump. So we are in the first area of the grove, where we have, partly we just have to get through the area. Then we also have, the, have to get 80 money, which we, we kill some enemies and we get some chests, and we'll use that to buy an item. And the category I'm playing is AVIP, which stands for All Vitality Fragments, Ivor Bugs, and that was the first one, and Bosses. So it's sort of like the any percent category, but we do gather some collectibles, and we also fight an extra optional boss that is not necessary to beat the game. So the first area of the game is one of the most hard areas, because the imps behave very randomly, so you can't just do a preset route every time. You have to react to what the imps are doing in order to survive and get through it fast. But luckily, the imps have been very cooperative so far. Okay, this is... On Insane, that would have killed me, so I guess it's pretty nice to... not play on Insane every time. Nope. Okay. This is a very slow... I... You can jump up on this platform as soon as you enter and not have to wait for a cycle like I did. But, uh, yeah, some, sometimes that happens. Well, I'm not really happy that I'm not playing on Insane right now. And we're approaching the first boss of the run, Edia. Uh, for that boss, there is a quick kill where if you charge up your ranged attack fully, bait a specific attack and release your ranged attack on a specific, at a specific timing, then it will hit her weak spot, which is her pearl, and instantly kill her. And there we go! That's the first boss! And killing a boss without taking any damage in this game gives you a special item. So there you see Adia's pearl. That's the first item of the run. I, that is a passive item that adds a poison effect to our arrows. And we can poison ourselves with it, so we have to be p careful, because we poisoning ourselves in the middle of a boss fight would mean we lose out on a very powerful boss item that we really need to clear down. So from that merchant, we bought an item called the Crystal Seed for 80 money. It's, a, it's an active item that uh, increases your damage by 50% for a short while when you use it. So it just speeds up a few of the early boss fights before we get better items to replace it. And yeah, you have three active item slots in this game and the two, uh, two passive item slots. So you have to equip items and uh, keep track of what items you have equipped. Currently I haven't equipped them yet because I will equip them at the start of the boss fight to minimize menuing. And now ne the next boss fight is coming up and I'll need to focus a little bit so Jeji can take over a little bit, maybe? All right. This is a part uh, we, we will fight uh, Mocha first, which is a little minion. And uh, then you will have to fight uh, Lubella, which is a very big witch. 
Um, both of the parts are, are the same battle, so we need to uh, have a perfect fight like, without taking any damage from the start. And look, as you can see, uh, Dream Fox is uh, mixing melee attack and uh, using maximum uh, arrows, like charge arrows to do maximum damage, uh, mixed with the poison itself. And now this is basically Lubella. We would like a good RNG, like she, if it's fine, uh, it's possible to take all of the HP without her diving like this. This is the RNG we can, we don't want, because uh, we have no choice but to wait. Well, she can die when she's off screen if you have poisoned her. Like, sadly, she had too much health. And you might have seen some blue rays of light flash across the screen. That is a hidden item, that, uh, which is a fairy you can summon by inputting up, up, left, uh, up, up, down, down, left, right. And uh, active items in this game, you don't have a, you have a limited amount of uses of them. But every time you save at a bell, which are the save points in this game, all your active items refresh, and you can use them again. And from Labella, we got this item, the Bachman patch. Just spawns a lot of blocks raining down from the sky, which does quite a bit of damage, and uh, just obliterates that mini-boss. That mini-boss is otherwise very scary, because it's immune to arrows, and you can't really keep it... You can't really attack it with me in melee and keep it stunned. So using items is your safest bet, and, uh, well... Also now in the route for AVIB, the route has diverged from the any percent route. In AVIB we go the top route here, while in any percent we would go down into the subterranean graves, but we'll go there later. Uh, the routing in AVIB is based on how do, how do we enable us to get every collectible in, a, in an area without having to backtrack and revisit an area again. So, in order to get every collectible, we need two power-ups. The first one is one that allows us to be smaller, and the second one is one that will allow us to dash in the air, because currently we can only roll it on the ground. So once we have those two power-ups, we can just uh, finish up the game, and or visit every, every area in turn, and just finish up the game. So we're now on the way to... Well, on this at this point in the story, you're supposed to get the four karst crest fragments in order to get access to the castle. And one of those uh, fragments is down here in the cinder chambers, behind one of the scariest bosses in the run, because it has a lot of health and can be quite unpredictable. But hopefully it will go fine. And yeah, this... We're going here earlier than we do in the any percent route, as I mentioned earlier. Uh, so we'll have less I or fewer items and the boss fight will just be longer and more complicated because that. So now I'll have to focus on the boss. So uh, this boss is Arsonist. It's a difficult one because uh, you want to be able to beat her, but at the same time you would like to make her defeat it the, uh, on the right because uh, we are supposed to go to the right after the fight. Uh, and this way we are like the closest possible to the exit. Uh, and Depending on the situation, uh, it's dangerous to be too much close to her. But at the same time, if you are like too far away from her, she will like to teleport, and, and the teleportation is like very annoying. But it looks fine for the moment. And here we go, first try. Yeah, it's very important here to say no to Calf, because otherwise she will give you a lot of exposition. Okay, I didn't want to talk to her again, but that's fine. We can say no to her a second time. But now we have one of the best items in the game, the Pocket Incensory. What that item does, it is adds a small, like, it adds a flame effect to your attacks. Which means that your melee attacks, your ranged attacks, and also the Bachman patches all have extra fire damage attached to them. So it's not a lot for the melee and the ranged attacks, but for the Bachman patch, it tur just turns it into a boss killer. So, in any percent, we would never go see any more of this area. We would kill Arsonist and then teleport out of there. But we have a lot of collectibles to gather, so that's what I'm going to do here. And we also don't have the warp ability, because we'll get that later. So in here I grabbed a uh, health fragment and a 
a ivory bug. There are 20 ivory bugs in the game. I'm not sure how many uh, how many health fragments there are, uh, but luck, hopefully I won't forget any. They are usually pretty easy to remember. So this room is one of the scarier rooms, when, according to people, but it's not too bad, in my opinion, after practicing this for way too long. So now we're just grabbing some more health fragments, and yeah. Other than that, it's mostly us climbing out of this area that with not too much going on. So I guess we can get a donation in while we just climb up here. Uh, yeah. Yes. We have a uh, seventy-five dollars coming in from the divers with a three instead of eight. Which is another great year of ESA runs. Amazing job by all the runners. Let's hit 40k. And that goes towards naming uh, Luca Kobe in Chrono Trigger. And another $10 donation from Avic Solaris 76 saying thank you for the great event. Keep it coming. But there I used one of the Batman patches just to kill one of these enemies because they are very hard to. Uh, move around and they can move unpredictably and here we're using the second Mabachman patch to hit a switch down in the elevator shaft that uh, allows us to access this area from the back door that is a sequence break so you're not supposed to be able to get here without acquiring a different key but this is very convenient for us because it allows us to get access to the next boss which will give us a power up that allows us to become smaller and it's oh, probably the best power up in the game or it's obviously the best power up in the game and, but to get that, we'll need to fight a boss we have seen already. We have to refight uh, Lubella a second time. But you'll see with the new items that if she doesn't dive here, she's going to die. Okay, she died. Well, you can still see the damage of the Bachman patch and the uh, pocket in sensory combo there. If she doesn't dive, she completely dies. Just playing it safe here, and there we go. This is actually one of the boss fights you don't need to not take damage on, because the item you get from defeating her uh, gives you back health whenever you kill an enemy, which is not very useful in a speedrun, because you're not stopping to kill enemies, and you're not really planning on taking damage. So now, we are a cat. We are smaller, we are faster, we can jump higher, but most importantly, we are cuter. So... You can skip this save point, but one of the rooms coming up can be very random. But I realize that I probably have enough health to actually take a hit there, but we're not playing as if we have more health. We're pretending that we are playing on insane, at least. So in cat form, rolling is... well, okay, it's movement speeds. Uh, dashing is the fastest movement. It's even faster when you're in cat form. And while the, da uh, the dash has a small cooldown after you use it, so you have to wait a bit. But while waiting for the co uh, dash cooldown, you can do you do want to roll. But in the in the cat form, at the end of the roll, you have sort of like a slow recovery animation. So what we do is we do a roll jump, and then we cancel out of that recovery animation with a melee hit, which allows us to move fast. But if I fail that, then it's. Just cute cat rolls on the ground. So this is the room that is really scary normally. First you have to grab this health fragment here. These enemies aren't a problem. The problem are these seeds. They are random where they spawn. But that was pretty good. I managed to get through it without getting hit. So that's really nice. And now since we don't have the warp ability. And we don't have the key to that area. We have to backtrack through here. And... Uh, Climb back up the long ladder, if you remember that. And for this, I have to focus. So, yeah, some messages now is good. Yes, yes. Uh, just a reminder, we got, we do still have the big, big, big uh, incentive for shaving Eternal's head, which is 10,000. So that's until the event ends. So get your donations in for that. And now that we are done with the ladder, 
And we are going to get the next power up uh, that comes from the next crest fragment, which is which will give us the ability to warp. That will minimize the amount of backtracking we'll have to do and just make the route a lot faster. So the position of this uh, this fragment is at near the start of the game. There was a small area where which we couldn't fit into because we were too big as a human. But now that we are a cat, we can squeeze in there no problem. Oh, that's... Wait, should Aerie be there already? We haven't met her yet. Ah, that's it. Did I forget a bug? I think I did. I'll go grab that later. Uh, but here we are in this area. The I don't really know how to pronounce that. Floresile. It's sort of a time travel area where you travel... I'm not sure if it's back in time or forwards in time. But there we have a, a, not a pretty tight cycle to make to speed up this room. And now we grab that health fragment sneak, uh, neatly. And here we have a skip you can only do if you have the cat form and the dash. Normally you're supposed to go down in that room to, uh, into a pit filled with enemies. But with the cat form and with the dash, you can just skip through it, which is very nice. So this bug I usually forget. But since I only have 10 now, I know that I forgot a bug. I know exactly which one I've forgotten, so I will pick that up. I know exactly when I can pick it up as well, so that's good. Now we... but... But we'll still have to backtrack once to an area we'll already be in. So now we're back in the grove, because there are three things we didn't pick up here uh, the first time. Two of them we couldn't, one is just faster to grab now. So like, we couldn't get access to this cat room. This ca the cat-shaped cat room. And uh, for that vitality fragment... There is also a Vitality Fragment in here that we could have grabbed, but the extra health doesn't do anything for us in the speedrun. So we just wait for it to get it until now, when we have more movement uh, speed. And then there is one... Oh, I wanted to land on the ledge, but let's just do this. There is one bug sneakily hidden up there, so that's 11. It should be 12, so... Now we're done with the backtracking here, so... We'll just have to go back to our city. Grab the bug that I forgot here. Very good. And it's off to go down into the subterranean graves. The subterranean graves is an underwater area. This so the underwater the water physics in this game allow you to like jump infinitely. Uh, as if you're swimming like so, but you fall slower and your movement is pretty slow. But rolling and dashing is still very fast. It isn't really affected by the water. So you want to try and dash and roll as much as possible on the water to speed things up. And here we have Princess Eri. She was actually standing between the car city and the forest earlier, but we hadn't actually met her yet. So that was interesting. Probably because we had a cat farm. I'm not sure exactly what triggers that. Yes, we have a small cutscene. This area is pretty short in any per uh, AVIB. Okay, well, okay, I have health now. This feels so weird. Usually I can only tank one hit and I, I do that to be able to grab that uh, bug easily. But now I can tank multiple hits. This is like a whole new world. But here we go. This area is a lot about optimizing movement. In any percent, you get here without cat form or dash, and you have to go down to an area down there to grab the key to get to uh, the White Leaf Memorial Park, where we fought the second time against Lubella and got the cat form. But since we entered the back door there, we don't need we don't need that key, and we just skip that area. This area is very scary normally because there are a lot of spikes here, and if you want to go fast, you want to roll jump over those spikes. But if you drop an input or fail a roll jump, then you will just roll directly into spikes. And the spikes are an instant kill in this game. Doesn't matter what difficulty you're playing on, touch a spike and you die. And we are approaching the next boss fight. I'm just shooting that enemy to kill it, because otherwise it will interfere with, with the boss fight. And here we have the next boss, which is Frida. I just don't decide.
And there we go. She was nice and didn't teleport. She can teleport, uh, which will like, take her off the um, battlefield for a short while. But it's not that long. And she behaved this time, so that's nice. Now we have the third fragment, which allows us to charge our arrows faster. So, yeah, we just... When we want to hold down our ranged attack and just do a bigger attack, it will charge that up faster, which is pretty nice. Increases our damage a little bit. And now we just have one crest fragment left to get before we can get to the castle. So, in order to... Oh, wow. Six white cats. There are seven cats on the screen. Their colors are random. So, and there can be white, caramel, or black. So, this is some very nice cat RNG here. Uh, yeah, so in order to get to the final crest fragment, we have to get a key from that NPC that I don't, I still don't remember the name of. And uh, that allows us to gain access to the upper, uh, an area on the upper level of this, uh, of this monastery. And there we will encounter probably the best boss in this game when you're playing casually. Sadly, in the speedrun, uh, Pardoner Fennel gets completely obliterated. It's a really fun fight with lots of interesting... Um, well, a really fun intense fight with great music. But as you will see when I enter it shortly, well, first I just need to go down here, uh, grab two ivory bugs and the soft tissue. The soft tissue is what allows us to unlock the secret, uh, the optional boss later. So we just need to grab that now. Before we enter the final fight. So in a speedrun we just use two sparse threads, which we got from Frida. It's just an item that blows up and does a lot of damage. And then we do two the Bachman patches and she's dead. We talk about the menu skip or Oh no, we haven't done that. Whenever you enter a boss fight, there's usually a cutscene. But if you open and close the menu, then you skip that cutscene. It makes it very nice to enter boss fights. And so, uh, yeah. Well, let's say that the menu skip uh, isn't that much obvious uh, on the first of bosses. But uh, next time in the run, uh, we will fight a very difficult boss. And uh, this will be very useful because it's all about... Uh, Casting uh, first the Backman patch, then uh, skipping the dialogue uh, between you, uh, the between uh, Dreamfox and the boss by using the menu skip. Uh, and so, at the first uh, second of the fight, uh, the Backman patch uh, will come from the sky and uh, it will deal the first damages. Yeah. So now we're in the Royal Pinacoteca, or since that's such a hard name to say, everyone in the community usually comes up with their own name. My preferred name for this area is Royal Pinecone City. That rolls a rolls a lot better of the tongue and this is a really fun area with lots of neat platforming you have to switch between cat form and human form a lot and to gather to gather all the pickups you have to do some neat platforming as well and yeah there are a f this is probably the area of the most collectibles in the game uh, I'm at okay we'll grab that on the way out so if you look at the bottom left of this screen, you'll see like some carvings on the wall. That's actually the fairy code, like the only hint in game for it. Which is pretty neat. So there's actually something that hints about it in the game, even if it's pretty hidden. So here we are also taking a small detour to get the sealed wind. The sealed wind allows us to... Uh, it's used to uh, access the true ending of the game. And like, we... For any percent, and for this category, we have to reach the credits after doing everything else, or in any percent, just reach the credits. The normal, or the bad ending of the game, doesn't have the credits, so we require the true ending in our runs, and when we did started on AVIB, we also kept that requirement in here as well. And shortly, the boss that uh, JGG mentioned is coming up. Where I will use a Bachman patch before and before triggering the boss, and then skipping the cutscene, and then immediately using the second Bachman patch 
And that will hopefully set us up well for this boss. Because this boss can roll. And if she does that, it's unfortunate. But she cooperated, so we managed to do this well. And the second five phase is nothing. So, I forgot to mention the item we got from Pardoner Fenner and the Crest Fragment there. So, the item Pardoner Fenner drops is the Tainted Missive, which, whenever you use it, it costs a quarter of your max health, So it's, and it can kill you, so you have to be careful with that. But it increases your damage by 100% for a short while, which makes it a very powerful item. And uh, the Crest Fragment allows us to charge our arrows even further, Allowing them to deal even more damage. Okay, I messed up this room, so I'm just gonna reset the room to make it easier. And then the item from Lupir and Magnolia, the boss in uh, Royal Pinecone City, is the heavy arrows, which allows a which an item that doubles the damage of our arrows. So if you just add together all the damage increasing items we have, our arrows are doing a lot of damage by now. So what I did there was hit another switch off screen, which uh, unlocks a shortcut. Normally you have to go around the castle, and but that takes time. So we just use the Bachman patch and unlock the shortcut instead. Goes a lot faster. So I said that we need to get the true ending to reach the credits. And to get the true ending, you have to defeat the final boss when you have upgraded your leaf, your melee weapon. And you do that by using the sealed wind that, next to that windmill, going down here, and bathing your tea... No, you're not your tea, you're baking... You're bathing your leaf in tea. And that empowers it, and makes it stronger. So now that we have done that, I'm going to go kill the extra boss that is, conveniently enough, next to this bell over here. This extra boss is pretty hard. But with the setup we have, it should, should be no issue. So you just give her the soft tissue that we picked up before pardon little fe Pardoner Fennel. And then we go down here to this ominously looking room. And boss fight. And we don't need this boss item either, so we can use the Tainted Missive during the fight to and take damage. Unfortunately, I was not supposed to take that hit, but, well, playing on hard allows you to make some mistakes. Uh, now we have killed, well, we have killed all bosses except the final boss. And we only have the final area of the game, the castle left. So, take a save, go to Karth Castle. And here we have a few pickups together, and then we just have to climb up the castle, reach the queen, which is the final boss. Because there is a corruption spreading, and yeah, so we're trying to reach the queen in order to figure out what is spreading this corruption and maybe try to stop it. So that's the what we've been doing this entire time, is just trying to stop a corruption that is spreading, and um, we're now near the end. So this area, to grab this health fragment that is over here, is usually pretty tricky, but it's actually very nice to have that extra health right now, because I made a mistake when entering that previous room, but... No. Right now we only have one more ivory bug and one more health fragment to gather actually. So unless I've miscounted or forgotten one, then we should almost be done. Wait a minute, I forgot. Okay, I messed up the strat there, but we're fine. Okay, so here I'm just gonna wait for that bomb because it's random where that bomb is thrown. So sometimes you can just avoid it if you go, sometimes it will hit you. And with my health, I'm not risking anything right now. There we have a calf who helped us with arsonist. She's taking a nap, because climbing a castle is very tiring. And here we have the final health fragment of the run. Hopefully. And now we 
only have to find one more bug and get to the queen. But on the way to the queen, there is one mini boss here. We call it the clone angel because she spawns clones of herself. And you have to hit the correct one. How do you identify the correct one? Well, you're supposed to look at the attacks and see that, oh, those are flashing in a different color. But we just look at whichever hovers closest to the ground and the target that instead. It's much faster. And now, the, I the last ivory bug is over here. And we're now nearing... This room here is actually very scary if you're on a good pace. Because those platforms are pretty small. But I managed to save that. And when you're nervous, those platforms seem to be even smaller. So this is the final elevator of the game. And then there's just one more room. And then the final boss fight against the queen. The queen fight is a free phase boss fight. But luckily there is no randomness involved in it. Uh, if you do this strat correctly, like she will always start each phase with the same attack. So if you do the strats correctly, you will kill her before she has a she has a chance to do anything else. And hopefully I won't mess this up. That's a perfect first phase. The second phase is a lot trickier to get perfect. And that was a perfect second phase as well. I'm surprised. And then there's one more phase. This is the easiest of the phases. Because, well, you'll see the, f the attack she does. And the attack is that she will just cause two explosions near the edge of the screen. And time. 38, 18. Well done. Yeah, I think this is actually the only time I have on hard because I just run this on insane. So I guess that's a PB for me. That's nice. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So I want to say shout out to the Momodora community. The speedrun community for this game is a bunch of very wonderful people. And it's a very welcoming speedrun. So if you want if you think you can't speedrun, try this game if you like to play it, because learning this speedrun is pretty simple and there are always people in in the Momo community who can help you with questions. So yeah, it's a simple and nice speedrun to try out. And also thanks ESA for allowing me to show this game, even though it turned out to be insane or hard instead of insane, but it's really fun to be here and be a part of this wonderful event. And yeah, I think that's it for me. Thanks everyone for watching and have a great ESA.